let the peace, love, and blessing of Jehovah God and his Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The judgment. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson. Luke chapter 17 verses 1 to 2 Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him, through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and be cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Second lesson, John chapter 19, verse 11. Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered, thee un he that delivered me unto thee hath the greatest sin. Golden text, Matthew chapter 27, verses 3 to 7. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple, and departed, and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces, and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel, and bought with them the potter's field, to bury strangers in. Introductory Spiritual Chorus The evil doer do not do it again. Evil will destroy the evil. Quote He who lives by the sword perishes by it. When Peter took out his sword and severed the air of the priest's servant, the Lord told him to return the sword into its place, for whoever takes, for whoever lives by the sword shall die by it. Have you not heard of Judas? What happened to him? A local adage says that the antelope once said it would not quarrel or have no axe to grind with the hunter that shot it, but with the person who intimated and directed the hunter of its movement. Equally so are the ultimate sinners or offenders only lightly punished. The ones that are punished heavily are the people who masterminded and engineered the offense to be committed. Such was the case with Judas Iscariot. He did not enjoy the thirty pieces of silver for which he betrayed the Lord, but was more severely punished than the people who arrested and nailed the Lord to the cross. Those who go about telling lies, backbiting, causing confusion, and sowing seeds of discard should know that they harm nobody but themselves. The generation, this generation shall not pass away until every statement made by the Lord is fulfilled. All who persist in telling lies, stealing, killing, fornicating, etc. are harming themselves. As a final advice and warning, any member who is not prepared to adhere to the tenets 
of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star should refrain from coming here. Anyone who seeks to be a true Brotherhood of the Cross and Star member should not be an obstacle unto another person. Let no other person stumble and fall because of you. That is the final advice. The person who is the source of another's fall will be severely punished and will never be forgiven irrespective of how such a person may fast and pray and plead he will never be forgiven what i am declaring to you is the judgment let our first lesson be re-examined first lesson luke chapter 17 verses 1 to 2 then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offences will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he be cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Be not a stumbling block unto another, of those who cause destruction read or heard the above text collectors of bribes traitors and persons who mislead others into stealing into gossiping cheating cursing anger and other offenses have themselves to blame for this is judgment if that is your stock in trade, pray fervently for yourself. A local adage says that the ashes follow the person who throws it. The person that is not guilty of this offense, that has never done it, should not be tempted or be lured into it. Whatever the price you are promised to commit an offense, do not, do not accept, have nothing to do with the fall of another. The word of God is like a sledgehammer that hits the rocks and breaks them into pieces and would rise to accomplish more tasks. The consequences upon people who cause others to derail are great and unpardonable. The significance of this gospel is that none of God's statements is false. The second implication is that no man should pose as an obstacle on his brother's way in any way, irrespective of the brother's or a person's status, age, or gender. Number three, Note that the third lesson is that whatever a man sows, the same shall he reap. The Lord's intercession does not cover this category of person. This also explains why it is said that no sheep perishes except the one destined for perdition. All those who are engaged in the acts of cunnings and through whom their brethren, friends, communities and families stumble have their portion in fire. Those who place obstacles on God's way are already doomed. Consequently, as a safeguard, do not curse nor punish, nor be angry with distractors. Continue to love them, give them food when hungry, and give them water to drink when thirsty. Our Lord Jesus Christ, though he knew who Judas was, did not expel him. Your goodness towards such adversaries is the source of your protection. Moreover, know it very well 
that nothing takes place except that which has been approved by God. No event happens by chance, but by God's design and the punishment of the person through whom the event materialized or is fulfilled is so great. Let the second lesson be, be re-examined. Second lesson, John chapter 19 verse 11. Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Sinners will be severely punished. Temptation must come, but be not the agent. Whatever befalls another person, be not associated in any way with it. If by any means you are implicated in any sinful act, you will be severely punished. The ultimate offender or executioner of the act may not be severely punished as the person who masterminded it. In fact, the punishment of the architect of the offense is everlasting. No events take place except through God's permission. But the punishment of the person through whom evil is caused is greater. Do not attempt to judge or punish any offender. If a person steals or kills, it is not your duty to punish the offender. Surrender every offender to God into whose hands judgment and vengeance lies. Do not share in any iniquity. This is why it is said that you should not resist the evildoer and should not attempt to hold the hands of your adversary. Tolerate every person and do evil to no one. The person who jails a thief or any other offender has greater punishment. The punishment of the judge who condemns a murderer and the person who executes that judgment is greater than that of the murderer himself. Leave every, leave every offender unto himself, however small his offense may be, for he is judged already. The evil that men do lives with them. Note also that it is unfair, in fact improper, to rejoice over another person's calamity. Do not express any comment, whether positive or negative, over whatever happens to another person. You easily ensure repercussion by expression of your feelings towards another when there is any change in the person's circumstance. That was the last prayer the Lord offered and taught his disciples when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If he did not say that prayer, the Lord would have perished on the cross. Pray for your offenders always and promptly forgive their offenses. We suffer mostly because we rejoice over the calamity that befalls our adversaries. Our efforts at reminding others of the event, of the consequences that led to it, attract another, even heavier penalty. It is written that you should mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with they that are rejoicing. Anyone who interferes in the affairs of another has a heavier punishment awaiting him. The three lessons confirm the fact that never <coughs> has the statement of our Lord Jesus Christ been uttered in futility. He is the truth and his words are true. Let the golden text be re-examined. Golden text, 
Matthew chapter 27, verses 3 to 7. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple, and departed, and went, and hanged himself. And the chief priests took the silver pieces, and said, it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel, and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Love your enemies. Our Lord Jesus Christ has said that there must be obstacles. But he proclaimed, Woe unto whoever shall initiate it that it were better to hang a millstone on such a person's neck and cast him into the depth of the sea the second lesson corroborates the fact that the sin of the people who delivered him up to the enemies was greater judas's discipleship with our lord jesus christ for three years and six months Profited him nothing. Judas enjoyed nothing out of the relationship. All those who backbite, the tail bearers, those who tell lies and derive pleasure at other people's misfortunes are worse off. Do not punish your enemy or laugh over his calamity. Christ did not keep Judas Iscariot at arm's length, even though he knew he would betray him. The Lord rather gave Judas the office of treasury, of treasurer, in charge of all the finances. The case of Judas Iscariot is a living example. For us to know the evils that men do live after them, whatever are the events that took place and whoever are affected, do not remark or express any feelings, rather pray for all and even your adversaries. The scripture told us that anyone that as the love for money has no share in this kingdom. Lot's wife was warned not to turn her back once they had departed their home. But because of her lust for material things, the thought of her trinkets and other things lured, lured her to attempt to go back home and right there, she became a pillar of salt. Judas his carrier heard the Lord preach against the lust of materialism, but did not heed his instruction. There are many more of such examples of disastrous and disobedient persons and people filled with material lust. Many that are afflicted and who are doomed here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star owe their fates to disobedience and material loss. A stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise. Let he who has ears hear. May the Father bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.